bicycle And Jimmy got a bicycle He got a bicycle too I got a bicycle And I love my bicycle And when people tell me Jimmy I tell them Jimmy who yeah He may think that his bike Is so much better than mine But he would change his mind If he took mine for a ride Bicycle, bicycle I love you I tell you everybody out there at a uh, in Acadiana land uh, thanks for sharing your Sunday afternoon with Jacob and Paul and uh, thanks to everybody who's watching on Facebook hi to uh, Mariah and Eleanor and Bridget uh, Eleanor chimed in I'm glad she's watching uh, it reminded me that uh, she makes little miniature foods uh, for for your pleasure they're very cool they're um, like uh, cupcake uh, lip balm holders, and I personally have a cheese nip on a necklace, and it's pretty sweet. It gets all kinds of uh, attention everywhere I go. Uh, Bebe's Faux Food, I think is her name, or uh, it isn't, I don't think, I know it's her name, on uh, on Instagram. It's pretty cool stuff. I remember those cheese nips. Yeah, the cheese nips are really cool. Uh, I think uh, my friend Misty got a ta- might have gotten a taco from her. Um, I th- if I'm not mistaken... She'll probably chi- chime in. She made a, uh, a a little mini plate lunch, I think, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, a little tiny plate lunch. So uh, mostly for magnets, like for uh, fridge magnets. Oh, see, that's what I want, man. I want a fridge magnet in the shape of a fridge and the size of a fridge. Uh, so, um, yeah. So p- as Paul is looking at his phone, oh, this is Jacob and Paul off the wall. Hi. Hello, uh, I'm Jacob. I'm Paul. And we're off the wall. <laughs> Yeah, Dustin remembers. We have an awesome in-studio <laughs> audience and musical guest. <laughs> <laughs> Even though, well, I still don't have uh, the first show that we were going to show y'all. Uh, but, man, we used to have some studio audiences up in well, this Well, yeah, piece. right, like 30, 40 people. Dude, it was one, like crazy. Uh, that one scene. Like the fire marshal was outside <laughs> looking in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can do that again. Okay. You feel free to come. Well, back then... Uh, we weren't on Facebook, so we didn't have a comment thread, so Paul wasn't constantly looking at his phone. I found out <laughs> recently that we can just put it here. that we can pretty easily, and in fact, I was going to do it this week, and I never got around to it, but we can put an overlay of that uh, so that we can see it on the screen. Oh, that would be great, because I'm looking at peop- our friends commenting. Well, and some people uh, have brought that up, Paul, that, oh, th- that you're looking at your phone. Well, you know, if people, Ian puts his computer there and talks to his Yeah, his but phone. they also have inside jokes. We only have outside <laughs> jokes on this show. Well, we sometimes we have jokes. <laughs> we have, yeah, they occasional might be, jokes. might be considered jokes. Uh, <laughs> Everything that comes out of my mouth is a joke. But is, <laughs> is it is it a, a joke if no one thinks it's funny? <laughs> is this is this? Can you hear this? So uh, I can hear it. We uh, we have a great show lined up. I, look, we waited two weeks for this show. So yep. did you. And we have lists. You might have waited longer. We have gi- giant lists of things to talk about that, that have happened. Oh, wait. Uh, I got to let somebody in. Sorry. No problem. Uh, not, not, not a problem. I'll just uh, t- badmouth you uh, while you're gone. So, uh, yeah, so we have a great show today. We have Dustin Gaspard here in, in, in studio. He's doing solo for us today, not with the uh, Freetown Sound. Um, but he's going to tell us some stuff about uh, things they have coming up in to include some new music. It, we have this. Uh, it's, we'll, we'll zoom in on this later. This is his uh, uh, EP, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Yep. 
looking forward to hearing his music. He's going to play some live tunes for us. Feel free to call in for sure. The number, I think it might be rotating on the screen. It's 366-8951. So call in and chat with us or chastise us or do whatever. It's good. Just don't don't be a jerk and uh, don't curse. We can only do that. Oh, uh, the car in the background of me. That's a little story that we have. Yeah. To talk about. Do that one first, and then I'll show the other pictures. Okay. Well, that, that car that's behind us is a 1960 uh, Metropolitan, uh, Nash Metropolitan, which I tried to go buy. And, you know, some people some people will say, oh, man, that thing's just sitting there. Go th- Take it. Or what, what do you give me for it? Make a reasonable offer or something yeah. like that. This particular person – Told me he wanted almost two thousand dollars for it. He didn't even tell me. I never got to talk to him. Talked to his wife, and I, I almost choked on my my spit when she said it because I was like, "What?" And so uh, it's worth about reasonably five to eight hundred dollars. I'd, I'd say I'd pay that. I don't understand the mentality. This is a let's call this a rant. <laughs> it looks it looks a lot like my truck, remember? <laughs> <laughs> With the plants growing in the back. <laughs> He had oak trees literally growing on the head of the truck. I'm glad that it finally got The The, the urban naturalist would have been proud. Well, not really. <laughs> <laughs> he lives right around the corner, and he would have been ashamed. But. So uh, <laughs> why, what's the mentality of a person that would rather just let something, knowing if he's not actively advertising it, someone walked up and, and asked to buy it and, and get something usable out of it, but his choice is to overprice it because he has power over you, I guess, and tell you that you don't give me that, that amount of money. I'm just going to let it rot. What kind of a jerk face power tripping a-hole is that? Paul's still trying to buy this from the guy, so hopefully he's not watching. <laughs> but, yeah, I, well, okay, <laughs> in, in, interestingly, or maybe he'll be – Maybe he'll be amenable to this jerk face. line of argument. I mean, it's a good argument. Okay, it's funny because I was not going to talk about this book. I just brought it because I'm reading it. But it, it's something that it talks about springs to mind when you bring this up because okay, it's called A Monk's Guide to a Clean House and Mind by Shuke Matsumoto. And <laughs> we'll ask uh, Dr. Fu later if he's, uh, if he's met this gentleman. But anyway, he's a monk, and it's mainly about, you know, that cleaning can be this fulfilling thing in itself, that the side effect is you have a clean uh, uh, surrounding. But it's not about the clean surrounding. It's about like being super respectful of the things around you and the objects around you, and that if you're not using a thing, you shouldn't necessarily throw it away. You should give it away. And then if it, if it has completely outlived its usefulness, then you throw it away. Right. But if this it, is if something if that – there's something of worth. Yeah. And you th- don't need it or not – you're totally not using it. It's going to go literally to waste. That's the thing. And so you're disrespecting the object that, that could still have life and that could still bring exactly usefulness. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's perfect actually. Uh, that, that car could give – it can't probably be restored. It's pretty bad. I mean, it, it's really. But it's got parts that could live again on yeah. another MG. Uh, 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 Nash. Um, oh, that's a Nash. Yeah, that's the Metropolitan. That's oh my God, it is. Yeah, that's Whoa. A, that's a 1960 Nash Metropolitan. Wow. It's, uh, two years. Wait, we have, three. We have, we have the 57. Yeah, so three years newer than us. <laughs> uh, well, I got the year mixed up. But uh, it's a 50. We have a 57 that we're redoing. Which is looking so cool. And it's the exact same body, but uh, this car has a trunk. A few little other odds and ends, very small things, a uh, glove box door, for instance. Mm-hmm. Uh, nothing major has changed. But anyway, uh, the fact that it has a few usable parts, and maybe even after I use it, I could sell it to someone else, and they could either use more parts, or maybe if they're crazy enough, there, p- there are people that will restore this car. Yeah. There are pe- I, I see people on the forum, like the Facebook, um, what do you call that? Uh, uh, Facebook Marketplace. No, no, oh. it's not M- M- Metropolitan Owners Club it, on Facebook, our page. They have, they can, you can see through their cars. They're literally perforated. You, you see the other side of their shop through, <laughs> through the firewall. Yeah. And they're going to replace all that metal and drive that car one wow. day. Wow. So what is it called when I have a car? D-Store? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that unstore. The <laughs> I am storing it. Uh, your your Subaru that I now own, uh, man, I'm like taking pretty good care of it. Yep, I, I was cleaning it out the other day. 
I told you a few things that need to be done to it. Well, I'm getting uh, new tires as soon as I got dough, which maybe will be payday. We're going to find out. We meaning me. That and uh, also Tiny Belt, we need to do that. Yeah. It's coming up. In a few thousand, maybe yeah. 10,000 miles. And it's so easy on a, on a Subaru. I mean, we could literally drink a couple of Abita Ambers and <laughs> knock it out in, in, in less than a six pack. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what, what's been going on with you? Well, uh, speaking of Abita Ambers, I bought a buddy of mine an Abita Amber, a giant one that costs like $11 because he bought Michelle and myself Book of Mormon tickets. Mm. If anybody knows about the Book of Mormon, uh, it's amazing. And it's playing for the last time, probably like starting right now. It was playing from the 5th to the 10th in New Orleans at the Sanger Theater, which, wow, the Sanger Theater. Have you ever been in this place? No, I've been in front, but never went in. 1922 Art Deco, like looks like you're in the past when buildings were worth. When it, when it was wow. art. Wow, yeah. yeah, dude. I mean, just like huge blocks of marble and all these statues and everywhere. The sound, is sound was amazing. Cool. I've never been in a, 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 an auditorium like that. Just amazing. And, and the, the uh, ceiling is carpet. It's blue carpet with lots of little lights that they can turn on and off. So it looks like the freaking wow. stars. Yeah, it was really amazing. And, and the show was just phenomenal. I can't speak highly enough of it if it ever comes to video. I mean, honestly, bootleg it because you can watch it. But I'm glad that I didn't because this was my first time seeing the whole thing in the Book of Mormon. Well, is, is that movie in theaters? Or, uh, well, is it brand new? I don't think they've ever, like, shot it. it. It came out 10 years ago, and it's a musical. I thought so. Yeah, and I don't think they've actually they, – they, you can buy the soundtrack with the original cast. And this was uh, – I don't know if any of the original cast was still there, but the cast was just spellbinding. This is live, okay. It was live, yeah. Uh, oh my God, it that was. That just hit me. I thought you went see it as a uh, as a stream. Yeah, streaming. Okay. Yeah, it, it's a live musical. It's got an intermission. I mean, put it this way: the first hour is so engrossing that it, it just it felt like no time had passed from when it starts okay. to when the intermission. It was just like, just just like solid, that. Yeah, uh, solid entertainment. Yeah, that's. And so it was really great, uh, uh, really interesting uh, songs. And, and the, the only uh, point I'll make, you know, I don't want to bore you with my inability to review media, but <laughs> uh, I read an article years ago, uh, a, like a couple years after it came out, about how, how revered it is in Mormon circles. And there were tons of Mormons there. Really? For, for a lot of Mormons, it's like this uh, uh, hodge, you know, it's, it's like this uh, holy trip. To what? see it, and they go see it, and, and, and it, you know, it's, it, and in fact, I overheard a conversation during the intermission, you know, it's so blasphemous, you know, because there's lots of cussing and everything, and, and uh, you know, the, it starts out with, uh, uh, you're at this Mormon training camp, and they're about to go on the mission, and so they're each getting assigned, and this one guy wants to go to Orlando so bad, because he went to Disney as a child, you know, well, he gets sent to Uganda, <laughs> and so when you get to <laughs> Uganda, they're singing a song, it's called a Hasadiga Iboi, and they're all, and so the Mormons start singing along, and so what does that mean? It says it means screw you, God. Basically, they're like, oh my God, I said <laughs> it like thirteen times, and it's because you know they have this dejected existence. There's all this bad stuff, and so anyway, it's just it, it speaks so much to gray, and to uh, you know these areas in life where there is no good and bad, but at the end of the day, it's like it's about the energy that you bring to it and mormons bring they might bring a goofy pantheon but they bring good energy you know they're just all about positivity and politeness and there and that's really something important and and, and multiple wives that's <laughs> also i don't want that but some people do i mean i'm not saying i don't want that because i'm broke <laughs> But <laughs> anyway, it was I gorgeous. I, I really enjoyed it. So uh, we should get some uh, some music in this studio. We I should. think. I think Dustin Gaspar is That's going to grace us. <laughs> Feelings rocking, rolling through a sunshine state, and my mind 
Some questions that I know I ain't been answering. Call me with what you gotta say, baby. You ain't gotta believe me. Bend over to please me. Born Mr. Moonshine, honey, I got to get closer to you. Laughing at me, not joking, funny, cause nothing that I'd rather prove that I like to lose myself. Get closer to you. If I can groove myself, like you know I can do. got going on with his goings on he's got uh the the voice of an angel and dope boots yeah i actually got a quick shot of those boots oh did you okay good the, the boot tapping nice and your mic is on if you want to pipe up man oh yeah thanks to girlfriend for the boots yes <laughs> yeah, they are, they are, shout they are, out they are fancy oh uh, aldo so, huh oh well so while we're name dropping too uh i got a shot of the carpe coffee i called carpe diem who we went and got crepes from this morning. They just started. Uh, good. Dude, good crepes. Like they got a savory, a couple of, oh, we got all of them, but uh, the okay. savory was the best. Fried capers in it and stuff. Anyway, uh, so I called him up because I was like, man, I want a golden milk latte, but I don't have the car here. And so I don't know if I'm going to make, I'm going to go and then order it and then wait and then get it and then walk back. It wouldn't have worked. So I called him and they made it. And I showed up and it was ready. So thank you, Carpe Diem, Gelato, and Espresso Bar. I, I haven't actually been in a while, and that's uh, that's not a good thing. I used to go on. Well, and it, it we changed hands, there. and it, it's really it's really looking nice. They've oh. kind of done a couple things, and yeah. We used to have our uh, our show prep meetings that's there right. during the week sometimes. Until uh, they kicked us out. <laughs> they did not. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't kick us out. We just chose to go on the porch. <laughs> So yeah, I don't. I'm not downtown much anymore. I'm usually I uh, know, in dude. Lake Charles and you know afar. And I'm not in Lake I Charles was. much anymore. Thank God. <laughs> I was today, as a matter of fact. Really? Today, and last night. So did y'all stay the night? Yeah, at, at Mariah's um, uncle's house. Oh, cool. Okay. And her mom was there, and all. all. We uh, we had, had a great time. At the tell ball. us about the ball. Yeah. It was the crew day carnival. The carnival. <laughs> 
Uh, there's so many crews. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was a crew to Carnival. They had a, 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 a DJ. Um, it's at the, it was at the Civic Center. Big, big turnout. Yeah. Actually, there were five or six uh, balls going on. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, it's a big space. Well, Lake Charles has the biggest balls of them all. <laughs> I yeah. thought that was Brian Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they, uh, they, they threw a great party. Um, do you know what? Uh, Cork fee you can pay to bring. Yeah, them. we did that. That was it's. Yeah, way because I mean it's like eighty dollars for a crown, you know, a bottle of crown. It's kind of crazy. It's like yeah. the airport. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the, just a good time. The costumes, some of these things were. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The theme was games, which is broad. Yes, it could be anything from a football game to a show. board game. Yeah, there's a couple of pictures of some of the costumes at this thing that were just totally rad. Um, Ours, we were uh, playing cards. We were king and queen of hearts. I know, I know. Oh, so <laughs> there we are. It, uh, being uh, all crazy. John Zant made those cards for us, and they are really awesome. He made these. Uh, he printed vinyl decals, huge, and uh, po uh, placed them or stuck them on po poster board for us. Uh, they worked out really well. Shout out John Zant. He makes my stickers. Right here. There it is. I'm getting a call from Jennings. I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm getting a call from Jennings. I'm just going to decline that and call it back later. <laughs> so. Uh, you want your call, we'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, go ahead and show that uh, guy, that Candyland dude. Yeah. That guy right there. His. How did he get in the door? Is what I want to know. I guess wow. sideways, sideways and ducking because this thing was over his head. He had. Oh, and also. Not right there, but he was carrying around a uh, candy tray with uh, lollipops and oh all kinds of stuff on it. Dude was, he, he brought his A-game. I, I think one of the best costumes there. And uh, there were some really cool other uh, very uh, interesting and uh, talented costumes. Oh, and also they had dancers dancing on little stages. That was fun. So it's always a good time. Do I have any more? Uh, that's the only. Um, that's the only one. Small. Okay, that's cool. And I have a beetle. I think y'all are both driving beetles or something. Oh, cars and coffee. Okay. Yeah, car I totally can tell you to come to cars and coffee. That that that's a that's a call to action I will make <laughs> on every show if I need to because it's such a cool time. Uh, all these beautiful cars gather at various locations. Uh, you can get on Facebook and type in uh, search for Lafayette League of Exceptional Motoring, who runs it now. Uh, different location every month, a second Saturday. This was a beautiful morning. Myself and Will went uh, in our Beatles, and man, some fine autos out there, and uh, also coffee and donuts. <laughs> so that's always there. Uh, good, good, you know, place to hang out, and uh, you can bring the kids and whatever, and just don't don't let them lean on the vehicles. But uh, <laughs> no, it, it's fun. Everybody has a great time, and uh, it's. Uh, kind of like a to be announced thing. We don't know exactly where they're going to be until they let us know. It used to be at a at a set location, but now uh, now now it cruises around and it makes it a little more interesting. Yeah, that's and it cool. brings people to businesses that maybe they didn't know were there. Yeah. You know, and they're you know, they get to look around and see what they do. So uh, good good time was had Saturday. Talk, man, that's a full weekend. Friday night we did. I don't even remember. Oh, my, my, my cousin came over. We worked in the garage. Okay, so Saturday morning, wake up early. Go to Cars and Coffee. Get back from that. Work in the garage midday. Leave to go to Lake Charles. Ball. Get back this afternoon after brunch in Lake Charles at Pujo Street. Oh, yum. It was good. And Thursday, he uh, lets me We drive my sister's car over there, this boat, oh, yeah, this 98 Concorde, <laughs> and uh, put it on the lift to see what the heck. And... Discover that Firestone billed my sister and my mom thousands of dollars yeah, over what they actually did. They just didn't do things that they billed for. When the ticket says replaced axle shaft, yeah. and it's got two old original <laughs> axle shafts in it, no. Yeah, I I any any not, lawyers who want to start uh, collecting not, not, data and so not cool. do a class action against – what Fire else did stand? they say? They said they changed. Um, I'm sure it's all little old. That would be oh, the class. Oh, they said they changed the front hub. The class would be little okay. old ladies that go in and get routinely gypped 
by, I mean, Firestone, I'm sure, is not the only bad actor. No, but unfortunately not, yeah. uh, which is what really aggravates me. There, there's some great mechanics in town. Uh, you know, I'm, They're not all this way, but it seems to happen more at these box places. Yeah, the places. big box, yeah. Um, so it, it, I'm, I'm not slandering them. This actually happened. But, I mean, but we're that's saying why I think if somebody really felt like putting in some legal hours – this is like a policy. You know, this is a systemic policy within these oh, right. institutions. Man, you could probably make a mint well, and, and, and make them change their policy in the process. And, and a great example of it is when I went to have my Subaru Align five, six years oh, ago. Oh, yeah, this story. I, I, I do my own maintenance, but I, did, I don't do four-wheel alignments. That takes a machine that you have to – put lasers on and all kinds of stuff. So I bring it to an alignment place. They, I go to pay, and they t proceed to tell me, oh, by the way, your front brakes are bad. You're going to need to change those. Oh, I said, uh, just give me the ticket. I replaced those brakes myself about three, four weeks ago. I knew for a fact they were obviously brand new. It's like a standard thing they yeah. say, hoping that you'll think, oh, yeah, safety related. I better just go ahead and do it. And yeah, that's how that's how they they get their upsell. Well, and they they're not even bothering to check and say, hey, we're about to like tell him he needs brakes. Does, does he have brand new brakes? These things were shiny black. <laughs> they were like brand new pads. They, they they weren't even worn at all. And they they actually told me I needed front brakes. Your brakes are too new. We have some used brakes we <laughs> could put on. <laughs> yeah, those are way too good. They're real slick. They're gonna be slippery. They're not gonna. Uh, I'm not even gonna mention the name they, of that. They're, place, they're not grippery. But I also won't go back. Yeah. Uh, did, does the king have uh, an ability to touch things and make them gold? No, no. This was more oh, of a okay. local place. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I will, I will say this. It was not Harris Automotive because I know that for a fact he does good work, good, honest work. Uh, okay. Yeah. Underwriter, p potentially. <laughs> I want Carpe to underwrite us so we get free coffee. Maybe Matt could like, buy us a, a box of donuts every week or something. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want he just sends a box of lug nuts. It's like, oh, man. <laughs> oh, I know what we could do. We could get him to buy us that dog, and then we could talk about Oh, <laughs> uh, that was the shortest-lived underwriter of hey, all. Hey, what's up, Lane Mac? What's up? Uh, how's it going? We're working on your brother's car. He's coming over Tuesday. You're welcome to come hang out too. Um, we're putting brakes on Billy Mac's car. That's the other Beetle. Yep. Cool. We do, well, not just brakes. Brakes. Uh, new, even freshening up the uh, illumination, putting new lights on it. <laughs> some uh, LEDs. No, no, just lenses. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to do like some ground effects. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, if he's watching, he can tell us. Maybe we need to. <laughs> kind of low pro the, uh, the, the, the handles. How do you, you shave, shave the handles? Shave the handles. <laughs> Man, don't give him any ideas. I don't have that much time right now. Uh, his car is really in great condition, though. Um, it, it just doesn't stop. I mean, who needs that? <laughs> Dude, I drove a car for a while with bad brakes, Stopping and you just is like weenies. You, just you do this go. number, you know, you do this a lot, and it kind of like slows it down. <laughs> the drag of the. <laughs> <laughs> so that uh, was crazy. We're having a great time though. We're working on we're replacing all the brakes now. We we were gonna just do the backs, but when I pulled it apart, I said, Nah, man, it needs seals. Let's just do everything. Yeah. And then you're fresh and new for ten years. Yeah. Away. I think what the problem is, it'd be more than 10 years if you use it on a regular basis. Yeah, it's when it sits. It sat for a, a year or two, and that's when your uh, things start to fall apart. Yeah, that's another thing this talks about. It's an, another <laughs> obvious. Well, it really is, though, because. not you, uh, what Lane Max said. Oh. Put some eyelashes on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was, what was the one? Herbie? Yeah. Oh, 50, he, that was a 53 Beatles. What was Herbie's love interest in that movie? I don't remember. There was some cute girl was beetle. A, not, no, I, I think, uh, I mean, he was like a partner to that little kid, wasn't he? The one that called him Ocho? Oh, so there wasn't like a love story in that? I don't I don't remember, to tell you the truth. It, it was, I don't remember that it movie. It was a cool movie. I'd like they redid like it with it. Lindsay Lohan. Yeah, I probably won't watch that one. But uh, I'd like to see the original. I watched her try to snatch a child. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> in, like, France. It was crazy. Um, so <laughs> now I'm spreading... I don't know. I saw that. I mean, it was a weird. I really, I like watched this video kind of concerned. Uh, internet folks. Yeah, it talks about, you know, you got to, 
you got to keep your house up or it'll just like be reclaimed by nature, you know? Obviously, yeah. Uh, you, uh, water, main, the main thing is just water getting places and not humidity being clean. or water damage, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you see these houses that, uh, that have been abandoned and they're falling in on themselves. Well, uh, they're, they're sealed, but they're not climate controlled anymore. And that's what yeah. does it. It starts to just, at, at the point you stop keeping it dry inside, it'll just start rotting and yeah. collapsing inward. Love, I love abandoned places. Like, Me too. Um, love taking pictures in or around them. Uh, we, have, we have a couple shoots planned. There's one we stop at uh, usually on the Lake Arthur Mardi Gras where they take the floats just around the big country block before mm -hmm. the parade downtown. I haven't done that in like five years, and uh, I really want to do it this year. I don't know if I can make it. It's in like two Saturdays, but there's this – I mean, I don't know. It's probably way more dilapidated than five years ago, but it's just crazy, like, walking in and – What What is it? What, what it's, is just it? A, it's just a – it's just a – was a white uh, wooden, okay. old, you know, couple-room house. Little frame house, yeah. Yeah, with a porch, and it's just, you know, falling apart. Hey! Oh, we got a caller. We got a caller. Go ahead, caller. You're live. Good, uh, nice. Thank you, caller. Got a little better than Ezra on our show. What? What's better than that? I mean, Ezra, I guess. Oh no, yeah, Dustin's better. Dustin yeah, he's, he's better. Hey, <laughs> what do you say? What, what are we looking at time wise? We got like twenty-seven minutes. Okay. Um, one more thing on, okay. on abandoned spaces. One place I would like to go to, probably. Uh, no, I will never do this. But the trapeze plant. Oh, get in there by man. the boat and take some photos. Find some old vinegar peppers. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, but I love the building. From the river, uh, it, it looks super cool. Industrial, abandoned industrial That's stuff. That's what I'm getting man. at. Man. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's get a tune let's, on. Let's talk about that after the show. Yep. <laughs> Dancing, you question the word. You regret the scandal, whatever it took. You're hard on yourself, you question if you should. You're hard with the hammer, you threw out your arm. Building this construct. dog that bites your hand, whether you bring me food or fat, trick or the pillow can lift your head, King David singing,
this way, this way? I'm cool with that. Yeah. Shout out to mommy. Okay. So yeah, this is something we've never uh, really done before. We're going to go ahead and interview him in uh, Studio C. Um, <laughs> From, Which yeah. we cannot see from our position. It's uh, via satellite from Studio C on yeah. the other side of the room. We have it going up to space twice just to be safe. And, and just because we can, we're a little bit you know, we're bragging about that. Yeah, we own satellites. <laughs> I'm just going to throw it up there. Me and, <laughs> me and Paul, uh, we're, a, we're a Jacob, wealthy men. There's a Jacob and a Paul satellite, and we both <laughs> use them. <laughs> there's only one, though. So this is going to last about two more minutes, and we have to wait for it to circle the Earth. All right. We don't have the whole network yet. No, it's just right now. Let's get this over. Yeah, let's get this. Let's get this interview going because the satellite's going fast. What's up, dude? Nothing much, guys. It's been a while. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I yeah. I went, I went to Sheridan. I think 2017 was the last <laughs> post we made, but I think that's oh, yeah. still true. So yeah. I think it had been way before that. Dang, man. Yeah. Uh, we well, actually, we've been trying. But uh -huh. because of scheduling and you being yeah. out of town and yeah. uh, because you're recording, right? Yeah, yeah. And I and any chance that I get, usually Sundays are like family days and everybody, all my family's from south of here so we can take the trip back home. Oh, yeah. And uh, recently, too, our car broke down last Sunday. Ah. Uh. Uh, yeah, the motor went out. I don't know why I never thought about talking to you about it. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, ask me if you still need advice. Maybe. Oh, well, we actually bought a new car, so boom, boom, boom. There you Congratulations, go. Congratulations, girlfriend. I know That's the way to fix it. Yeah. Hey, caller, yeah. did you have something to say about the musical guest? Yeah. Um, the acoustics are real good. The sound is real good. I noticed on the other talk shows, the acoustics are always bad. The sound is always bad. In your show, the sound is always good. Well, that's not good because I'm uh, responsible for some of the audio on the other shows. <laughs> but thanks for, the, uh, thanks for the input, Don. How's everything going? It's always good because it's fun and just yeah, well, uh, I will look more into that. There are issues just with, like, depending on your provider, LUS and Cox, the levels can can be different at different times of the day. It, I'm really not sure what uh, what all goes into it, but. Uh, you can always call and ask them to crank it up, and hopefully they can do so without compromising the audio. Yeah, we get that sometimes on our show. People can't hear. They'll call in, and we'll make an adjustment, and they thank us right away. It's like, yeah, we get it right. <laughs> yeah. But thanks for the thanks for the input, Don. Good to hear from you, man. What's correct that situation? Well, tell T Don I say what's up, and Michael too. Okay. Have a good day. Okay, buddy. Thank right. you. See ya. Rock and rolling. Yes, awesome. Don used to do a show here, actually. Yeah. We miss you, buddy. We'll, we'll, we'll back to our uh, back, back to our guest. There we go. Oh, Working we're on a record, right? Working on a record. Uh, so the first song that I played today was going to be from uh, the full band DG and the Freetown Sound debut record. Mm -hmm. uh, that song, Better Than You, is nearly finished, and uh, we're going full scale production, backup singers. Horns, keys, cool. you know, the whole the whole scheme. And then uh, what I played second was from my solo demo record, uh, Porcelain Prayer Tape, right there. Nice. So uh, completely different entities, completely different songwriting style. Um, I think those tapes just went up on Spotify and iTunes, and I think they're all available through cool. the interweb. So what do they search then for your solo work? Uh, just Dustin Dale Gaspard. Dustin Dale you Gaspard. Probably find something like that. Awesome. Okay, we'll take another call. Hey, caller, go ahead. You're live. Did you hear about the kidnapping at Broadmoor Elementary? I hope this is a joke. I did not. Did that really? He woke. He woke up. He woke up. He woke up. Ah. <laughs> oh my God! Thank God for Jesus. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, did this just happen? Was he playing on the playground on Sunday? Uh, that, wouldn't oh. have been, that would not have been me, by the way. I never napped. I was always the one that, <laughs> I was always the one that was getting the... And I have no kids. Ruler <laughs> on, the, uh, on the knuckle. Yes. 
Well, thank you for that lovely joke. I, I didn't check my Facebook. I, I'll put up the info for the uh, the theater stuff next week. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah. definitely air that. But yeah, that, that's good because of the, uh, well, I'm not coming up more, but the Asperger's Autism Project, or Autism Asperger's Project. And right now, um, Forever Plaid is currently playing at Lake Charles Little Theater. Oh, it's playing now. Okay, Forever Plaid's playing at the Lake Charles Little Theater. Is it uh, one more weekend, or? Um, it's uh, 15th, 16th, 17th, and then the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Okay, great. So two more weekends at the Lake Charles Little Theater. That sounds like a great uh, a production. And that is, uh, as you said, uh, involving... Autism and Asperger's, uh, the, the aus- no, aus- Forever Plaid. For, Forever Plaid is not. Oh, it's not. That, okay, that's, sorry. That's, no. No, that's, um, that's the Autism Asperger's Project is at McNeese in March. Oh, okay, gotcha. Cool. Yeah, well, Forever Plaid is um, about uh, basically a doo-wop group that gets to come back from the dead, but they're, it's not like they were, they're like in some, it, it's confusing, but... <laughs> the fun is just watching the, watching others who are great young actors in it who play this duo group called the Plaids and um it's, it's no admission I mean, it's no uh, no intermission. Cool. Yeah. You, know, you just wonder they um, they all have great voices. It's, you know, people should come see them. Okay, awesome. Yeah that's it. Well, I'll be in town in two weekends, so maybe I can catch it uh, that final weekend. Yeah, because I went um, last night, and even usually second nights and Saturdays aren't as crowded, and the whole theater was crowded, was filled. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's awesome. great. That's always good to see local theater being, you know, uh, enjoyed. Uh, and caller yeah, that was trying to get through, if you want to call back, it looks like a. a yeah, okay. Oh, well, I think Brianna has a real quick. Joke. Yeah, please. Yeah. Okay. Did you know that from Rembrandt, Rembrandt could only tell time during the day? I did not know. Do you know why? Why? He painted the he painted the night watch. <laughs> <laughs> I accept your joke. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Brianna. We'll be back next week. You definitely come back with some more. Uh... <laughs> yeah, give us another one next week, and we will talk about uh, the Autism and Asperger's Project next week. Yes, sir. Thanks for calling, y'all. Okay, bye. Okay, okay great. Bye. Um, if the other person calls, you can grab it. I, I just hear a little oh, bit of a tear. I'm going to check and see what Okay, sounds is. good. Hey, caller, you're live. Hi, I just wanted to say that your musical guest uh-huh. is very, very handsome. Oh, we, oh. we were just saying the same thing. Ow! And my Isn't girlfriend's he? not going to like yeah. this. <laughs> I, I am taken. I he is. I love that hat. That, and what about them boots, right? Right? You know, he must have a hell of a girlfriend. He must. He must Dick pockets. So <laughs> back off with Dick pockets. <laughs> <laughs> You dadgum right, girl. You better watch out because that girl don't play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, it's good seeing y'all on TV. I haven't seen y'all in a long time either. Oh, I see how it is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We've been here. <laughs> you could have lied and said we watch every week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you caught me, Sam. Oh, yeah. Well, if you can't watch, just remember to get on Facebook, uh, click play, and then tab out. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Make us feel better. Sharon and on social media, so they know. Even better, okay. We'll know now. Perfect. <laughs> well, thanks for calling. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Later. Good Super cool. So what's the, uh, are you going to play a final song for us? Yeah, we could do a final one. Uh, I'll do something off the uh, new record. The okay, great. That'll be coming out. Uh, we also made a music video for this. That'll be coming out pretty soon, too. Cool. And, uh, like us. You can follow us on Facebook. Our website, Dustin Gospel Music, has everything on there. Okay. Both solo and full band out, uh, stuff. Oh, yeah, and Paul, if you could now, show up, this will be the, uh, the we'll, record. We'll, we'll usually play about at the end. Uh, okay. Uh, this, I want you to talk about this piece right here. Okay, this is, uh, is going to be our record cover, front and back, uh, somehow split and edited in post. But 
the artist who did this, her name is Kim Clavey, I believe. She's from wow. Michigan or Missouri. I may be getting that wrong, but I, I discovered her on Facebook. And this art is called Wine Pour Art, where she takes uh, a specific type of wine or possibly a, a lager, a beer of some type. Yeah. She'll spill it and then uh, just paint what she sees right. out of the spill that itself. Is so cool. So she has, she has a whole catalog of these. She does them all shapes and sizes. She's an incredible artist. Uh, we really, really love her stuff. I, I wanted something creative, something that stood out, and then something that reflected a lot of the uh, surrounding area and what our music is about, and that's what she made there. So check her out. She's I definitely incredible. I love it. I love the fact that, uh, well, first of all, I, I, I remember back when I was a kid looking at the water stains on the ceiling. Of yeah, my, yeah, my yeah same exact thing. And yeah. making up shapes. You know, yeah. This is kind of like that. She, she takes what's there yeah. and says, oh, that could become, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, that's exactly how I felt about it, too. Or just like coffee spills, like in class, yeah. I doodle. And now she's like, obviously, she's a great painter, so she can really make it's something out of it. It's a concept that was very detailed and, and uh, intricate. Yeah. yeah. There's so much going on. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you look at it, the longer you look at it, the more that something can I'm actually appear. I'm just glancing at it mm -hmm. and my phone throughout yeah. the show. Uh, but no, it's really intricate and uh, a very, uh, there's a lot of little fine details to it. So it's, it's a beautiful piece. What's yeah. the artist's name again? Her name is Kim Clavey. That's K I M K L A B E. Uh, you can look her up on Facebook. Like I said, she, uh, she's relatively unknown. She didn't have uh, too many followers on her page, and I reached out to her, and she was completely down for the idea, really wanted to work with me, cool. and she has helped us out a whole bunch uh, with this. this picture, it makes me happy. Yeah, it really does. It's super duper cool. I think it'll be unique, and we'll carry the, you know, match the music and kind of carry it, make it yeah. stand out. Yeah. She's always invited on the show. So if, she yeah. if she ever makes it down here, I'm sure I'll let her know. Yeah, Such like I said, she has a catalog of these things. You should see all the stuff she comes up with. I think she does all the way up to like uh, three by six huge, you know, Whoa. footage of yeah. uh, just pouring and then painting whatever she sees out of it. Uh, one more question. I don't think we asked. Do you have any live shows coming up? Live shows coming up. I have uh, February 23rd. I'll be doing a cover set at uh, the, one of the, I think the new Noodle House is Zoomy, I believe it is. Yeah. Uh, I'll be posting about that. Sunday. Uh, yeah. And uh, I got another one March 30th. Until then, the full band comes back in action in April. Cool. Uh, we're going to be kicking it off at the Po' Boy Festival on April 6th. Oh, yeah, we'll be there. So, yeah, keep your bellies empty and your dancing shoes on. <laughs> sure, we'll be there. Yeah, it'll be a good time. Well, cool. We'll get a song at the uh, end of the show. Yes. Okay. Thank y'all. Dustin Dale Gaspar. Thanks again, man. You know, uh, one of the reasons I, I thought about the trappies plant is because a couple of weekends ago, we went ride in my boat on the Vermilion which I love doing. I love just to putt, you know, uh, you take off from Rotary Point, say, you like that one, Chris Cameron? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, one. that inquisitive look he had. Like, hmm, thanks for being interested. Uh, no, uh, we, went, we, we went from Rotary Point and, and, and took off south. That would be south, right? Or s it's kind of south, east, whatever. Uh, so we went toward Brobeard's. And the tr we passed the trapeze plant. You can literally, like, dock right up to it. And, you know, like I said, probably shouldn't do it, but uh, you, you could take pictures by it, by it, by the side of it, not go in. That's what it, you would do. So, yeah, I mean, what, would, what law would you be breaking? I mean, is it condemned? Is it dangerous? Is it just trespassing? There is a fence around the outer side, you know, so I'm assuming that maybe would be trespassing. I, I, I just always feel like the no like trespassing is like a goad. Oh really? No, none at all. Right, and and you know maybe so just like mm, almost no trespassing would be more. Then I'd be like, okay. Just th th think about keeping out. Um, <laughs> yeah, think about. <laughs> <laughs> consider so, keeping. Yeah, because that's a good one. So, uh, n one thing that kind of aggravates me is um, the, let's take for instance uh, the Six Flags Park in New Orleans. Okay, naturally deteriorating beautifully. But then I see pictures of it and people have gotten in there and what is the thing about somebody going in and spray painting everything? Well, there's not a picture of it that isn't completely covered in stupid graffiti. I, I feel like it really depends on the graffiti because there's some graffiti 
that's like gorgeous and well done okay, and like no, well, well executed. I'm and then there's just like, like oh, my like name's Satan. Joe. Yeah. You know, like, and a, and a pentagram. There's some horrible graffiti around downtown. Like people will take the big marker and like do their sign. But learn to draw. Jeez, yeah. obeso. Give us some art. And, and that's a great point. I'm not. I, I maybe wouldn't even be so mad if it was just a little bit. Every wall yeah. in there had some beautiful artwork done on it. And there are people that can make spray paint art. Oh work. yeah. I've seen some. I've actually stopped on the side of the road, pulled over because a train was stopped, and I saw graffiti on the side of a, uh, a train car that was insane. Yeah. I mean, it looked like they took brushes and actually you know, did, a, did a worked on a canvas here. So. Uh, Anyway, it, the, the buildings, I think, deteriorate beautifully on their own. The vines coming through the windows totally. and, the, and the collapsing of the it, on itself. Yeah. Uh, so they have a, has some of that. And whoever did the – props to whoever did the graffiti on the water tower there because I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> I got – I'm afraid of heights now in my old age. I don't know the what graffiti happened. graffiti sucks, but I'm just saying the fact that you <laughs> – <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you can get up that high, you can put your name. Yeah, right. That's okay. <laughs> heights? No, I agree. I don't know what happened. I remember going to – I probably told this story. I only have like 19 stories. Uh, <laughs> going going to the uh, track, the UL track there by the baseball field and all that like eight years ago or so, shortly after I moved to town. And I was I saw the drum major tower where, you know, you can get up and like – Right. And I was like, ooh, I'm going to go climb that. I used to lo- – when I was a kid, I would get on every roof that I could, like anywhere I went. I would – all the church roofs and the roofs of my neighborhood. Anyway, I mean, I got up there, and I got right up to the top, and I was like, I was like climbing onto the platform, and I was just like, I am mortified. Like, what happened? And apparently, your uh, some inner ear bone like ossifies as you get older, and so it, there's like a reason why people get more afraid of heights I've as they get older. I've been afraid of heights since I was a kid. Like, I've oh, man, I I wasn't. You know, and the odd thing is about it, if you put, let's say you put a 4x4 four four board right there, 4x4, four four, piece of wood, uh, eight foot long, I could walk across it while drinking this coffee uh. and uh, talking to you, okay? Put that 4x4 four four board eight feet in the air. <laughs> eight feet. Eight feet isn't very high. I mean, I'm not afraid of eight feet. I'm afraid of like 16 feet. I could not do the or same task. Feet. I know what you mean, though. That's an interesting, like, mental exercise. It's... It's I, I can't even watch a video of someone high up. Like, you know those all oh, those idiots that jump across buildings, and stuff? <laughs> dude. I mean that's your death wish. But uh, <laughs> I don't. Watch Aren't them. you playing a character that jumps stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, playing. I don't, actually go, I don't even like getting on the fourth floor of the parking tower. I'm kidding. That's okay. And oddly <laughs> enough, I love to fly. Yeah, but I, that's different. Yeah, I know. It, you're th- in it's like in abstract a, at that point, too. Like, Well, yeah, besides no, the fact that you're in a safe plane. Even, yeah, even at the 8-foot mark or the 30-foot mark where I would be afraid to be on that said 4x4, four four, uh, in an airplane, you feel, well, first of all, I trust the machine. You know? I just trust that when I get up thousands of feet, I have enough time to, like, have a, a nice last few breaths, you know, like – yeah, it's not like where I'm just like, ah, crying, and then like, oh, man. I didn't even get to, like, have my life flash before my eyes. I just, I, I, I'm not a heights person. Um, I'm a widths person. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about the snake wedding. Okay, all right, yeah, so I went to the snake wedding yesterday. So did, like, a thousand other people. It was yeah, crazy. Like 1,800 or something. It was, like, a crazy amount of people in this place. Like the, Sienna's watching. Uh, I saw Sienna. I didn't bug her because she was super busy. They were actually me and my, me and my buddy that came in and his uh, uh, stepchild and wife. Okay, we're all like looking around at all this great stuff, and then it's getting close to the snake wedding time, four thirty. That's when snakes get married. So we're trying to make our way to the atrium. I'm not sure where the atrium is. I'm like, yeah, come this way, and we go mm. to the very back uh, on the first floor, and we end up in the room where they're coaching the people that are in the ceremony. Oh, and yeah. so I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, well, and that, but they didn't want to do it. So we're like, fine. So we, because they were going to let us like walk with them and maybe hold an animal or something. So we just snuck back out and oh, went dude. to, yeah. You should have done it. I know, but I mean, I'm kind of glad I didn't because I got a like funny little video. I'm going to play this video. Oh, good. Uh, Sienna said it was a great success. Oh, um, so there cool. were 12 to 8, something like I, uh, more than 1,000 people, like you said. And so, yeah, it was a great turnout. 